Hello, I'm Robert Payton, and welcome to the book of Revelation. It's so simple. We're reading chapter 5 of the book of Revelation, and it's uh, Christ is victorious, and we're going to talk about the scroll. Uh, the most important part about Revelation chapter 5 that everyone just breezes by and no one stops is the first verse. And Revelation 5 verse 1 says, Next I saw in the right hand of the one sitting on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. Now what every pastor breezes over immediately is the fact that there's writing on both sides. Now it's like a newspaper rolled up. Uh, you can see writing on the inside if you're peeking it, but on the outside, you know, you're sitting on a bus or something, someone can read the outside. Someone, anyone can read the outside of that scroll. Now, this scroll, God wrote sometime after the sin in the garden, when they explained what was going to happen in the end, what this punishment was going to be for mankind, for... Uh, disobeying him in the garden and how everything was going to kind of come to fulfillment so when he wrote it he wrote it on both sides the inside and the outside of the scroll rolled it up put the seven seals on it and there it sits <clears throat> and only one person was going to be worthy to open that scroll and if there's background noise I got the fan going we got a fan making noise but it is storming outside so, and I love it. All right. Um, so, just imagine that scroll with seals on it, just like a newspaper. Uh, let's go ahead and read. We're going to go read through. And I want to cover, <clears throat> if you watched Revelation chapter 4 by the four living beings, I skipped two more verses. Revelation uh, 5. Um, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Revelation 5, verse 5 and 11. Uh, it's all in here about, uh, you know, the angels are the four living beings and the, the 24 elders. Uh, but let's read. Uh, verse 2, Revelation 5, verse 2. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? The timing of this a lot of pastors preach that this is you know John got transported to the future uh, to see all these things that's the only way all of this can happen no he did not get transported to the future he was transported right then which was approximately 2,000 years ago um, so it's back this is back then when all this happened when John saw all these visions and everything from the book of Revelation, and what is happening now is a is a is at his time is a now situation. It was happening in his now, which is, was about two thousand years ago. He got taken up in the spirit to heaven to view and wit he witness. And John was like Jesus' brother, you know, best friend, brother, etc. And he brought him John. Jesus brought John up there to witness this, and. You know, to give it to us to witness these events because he that was the purpose of Christ's coming was to save us and to open this scroll and to give us more information you know, it's like a bonus to be able to open the scroll now the scroll uh, uh, other prophets saw it you know the flying scroll and they saw the russet you know there were the red horse they saw and there's more information in the Old Testament about what is going to happen to Jerusalem on the outside of the scroll because the prophets of old saw it going by and they were giving visions regarding what was on the outside they were not allowed to see what was on the inside they were giving visions on what was on the outside of the scroll so and in Revelation chapter 6 you're given the same visions what was written on the outside of the scroll and Jesus also while uh, he was with his disciples at one point told his disciples what was going to happen 
and he was quoting from the outside of this scroll. And that can be found in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, and in Peter. Peter wrote a lot about what he saw. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, let's go on. Verse 3. But no one in heaven, on earth, or under the earth was able to open the scroll. Again, the little things, the tiny things, everyone just brushes over. But no one in heaven, in heaven, above us, on earth, on earth, or under the earth. Why did it say under the earth? Why? Well, because there's people under the earth. There's there's beings under the earth. There's there's a lot of stuff under the earth that are are little closed little globe society doesn't know about. And hopefully one day all of this will be let out and you can broaden your mind some more about what's been going on and it's all biblical. Okay. I cried okay, continue on uh, verse four. I cried and cried because no one was this is John. John cried and cried because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or look inside of it. Verse 5, one of the elders, one of those 24 elders, said to me, John, Don't cry. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has won the right to open the scroll and its seven seals. Verse 6, so Christ, Christ was the only one in heaven, earth, and under the earth. Amongst those beings was the only one found where they deal with the scroll. Verse 6. Then I saw standing there with the throne and the four living beings in the circle of the elders a lamb that appeared to have been slaughtered. He had seven, seven horns and seven eyes, which are the sevenfold spirit of God sent out, sent out into all the earth. So, here's Jesus. He's in that and remember the last video we're talking about it's God's throne 24 elders within there with God and the 24 elders is now <clears throat> Jesus he's standing there he's seen standing there got seven horns horns represent kings that we find out later in the book of Revelation and Daniel the horns represent kings or kingdoms and seven eyes again it's the same spiritual reference and I believe these are the uh, what was addressed in chapter 2 and 3 with the letters to the seven churches. Because after Christ died on the cross, those letters, he sent those letters out to the churches saying, you know, these are, these are from me. Okay? So, uh, again, uh, verse 7. He came and took the scroll out of the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. That's God the Father. He took it out of God the Father's hand. He's looking at the scroll that he had read on the outside, every single bit of it. Since before he came down, becomes son of man. He knew what was written on the outside of the scroll. He just didn't know what was inside the scroll. When he took the scroll, the four living beings and the 24 elders, that's all the angels in heaven, everyone in heaven, fell down in front of the Lamb, each one, held a harp and a gold and gold bowls filled with pieces of incense which are the prayers of God's people and they sing a new song you are worthy to take the scroll and break its seals because you were slaughtered at the cost of blood you ransomed for God persons from every tribe not just not just Baptist churches not just this church or that church Every tribe around around the globe, okay. Language, every language. Remember Tower of Babylon, all those different languages. Every language, people, every people, and every nation. You made them into a kingdom for God to rule. You united all of us. We're all under God. Kohan or a high priest to serve Him. And they will rule over the earth. Now, this is a, a future prophecy right there. They will rule. There's a time coming where we will rule with Christ, Revelation 20. Rule and reign with him. I think it's uh, verse 4. We will rule and reign with him. 
over the earth, and this is this is over the people of the earth. When Christ, uh, you know, he resurrects us, and we're all given a job. And 144,000 are, you know, with Christ. They're, they're his, and uh, his special hand picked, and the rest of us are, are, we have our jobs to rule and reign with Christ for that 1,000 years over the people that did not accept Christ. Verse 11. Then I looked and heard a sound of a vast number of angels, thousands and thousands, millions and millions. They were all around the throne. The living beings and the elders. All the that's defined right there. Uh, we were talking about last chapter. Again, all the angels were around the front throne. They're defined as the living beings, the four living beings, four different types of angels, and the elders. And they shouted out, Worthy is the slaughtered lamb to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and praise. And I heard every creature in heaven on earth, under the earth, and on the sea, yes, everything in them, saying, To the one sitting on the throne, and to the Lamb, belong praise, honor, glory, and power forever and ever. The four living beings said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. Okay, that's full of backing up Revelation chapter 4. Um, now, every creature, uh, they don't do it now, but... I believe back in the day, every every creature before Adam's sin, Adam could speak with the animals, and we got evidence in uh, it was this Balaam with his donkey talking to him, and 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 a couple other things in the Bible. So anyway, let's go back. Let's go back to that scroll because this, this is important to understand. If you don't understand the part about the scroll that I'm about to tell you. Uh, you be so bold as to say don't teach anything about in the book of Revelation because from here on out if you don't understand this you're going to get something very wrong and uh, I was guilty of it back in the day so this scroll what was written on the outside of it well we go back to uh, Matthew 24 Mark 13 and Luke 21 and in a nutshell we're going to read from one of these chapters uh they're at the temple before the festival, one of the festivals, uh, I think it was leavened bread. And um, the disciples, hey, look, look, look at the buildings, look at all this, look at everything, look at the, look at the inscriptions on all the buildings, look how beautiful. Jerusalem was beautiful, it was filled with just beautiful stuff. It was the most awesome city in the world at the time. Everyone came to see it. And he said, look, look, look at this, look at that, look at this, look at that. And he says, let's, let's just read from one of them. Um, I'll probably just go from, I like Matthew, but we'll just do it from, we'll do it from Luke. Matthew, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, and Revelation 6. They, they run parallel. It's the same thing. It's what is written on the outside of the scroll. Except that, just get that. It's the same thing. Because he removes the seals from the outside of the scroll in chapter 6, which we'll go through next video. And when he removes some seals, it's, it lines up with everything in Matthew 24, Mark 15, Luke 21. All four books are parallel as you read. And it's all about the same thing. The, uh, the destruction of Jerusalem. And something else that's coming up in our future. So, the outside of the scroll has a a lot about what's happened in our past with the destruction of Jerusalem, which occurred between 66 and 70 AD. And at another point, it has a little bit of what's going, something's going to happen in our future that has not happened yet. So let's uh, go from Luke 21, verse five. As some people were remarking about the temple, how beautiful its stonework and memorial decorations were, Jesus said, the time is coming when what you see here will be totally destroyed. Not a single stone will be left standing. He's talking about Jerusalem. They asked him, Rabbi, if this is so, when all these events take place, now this is a little later when they asked him because in Matthew 24, Mark 13, you got to read them all kind of 
in next to each other to kind of scroll and you know they found out later that uh, when he was sitting on the uh, Matthew 24 verse 3 when he was sitting on the Mount of Olives the disciples came to him privately tell us they said when will all these things happen look at these questions when will all these things happen what things <clears throat> not when he returns to set up his millennial kingdom okay this specific one when will all these things happen it refers to the destruction of Jerusalem and what will be the sign that you are coming not what happens when you're coming so what will be the sign of your coming and what the uh, this world or this age the end of this age when is it ending when is the end of this age not this age we live in that age they lived in over there not us them I mean if Jesus was here today in America like so many pastors like to tw turn this scripture around he and he said all this will be destroyed yes we're gonna ask when is this gonna happen we don't care about what's going to happen 2,000 years. He just told us that this place was going to be destroyed. And, you know, which is not, hopefully not. We don't know. Nothing in, nothing is in the Bible about the United States of America. Um, speculation, but not facts. Um, but we want to know, you're a disciple, you're with Jesus two, about 2,000 years ago. You want to know when Jerusalem's going to be destroyed. And you want to know um, when would the, when would those happen, and what would be you want to know the sign that Jesus is coming, and what the end of the age is. So let's go back to uh, Luke, and we'll kind of pick it up because I kind of wanted to brush on it. Mark thirteen has pretty much the same stuff. Uh, ooh, Jesus answered them in Luke 21 when they said, "What well, uh, was uh, Rabbi? If this is so, when will these events take place? The destruction of Jerusalem, and what sign will show that they are about to happen?" Now here they're saying, "What sign will be given about what when that will happen? The destruction of Jerusalem." And that's all they asked in Luke 21. Let's do Mark 13 because I think Mark 13 has a wee bit more. It falls open to the page. Uh, as you, 13, 1, Mark 13, 1, As Yeshua came out of the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Look, Rabbi, what huge stones, what magnificent buildings. You see all these great buildings. You see, and Yeshua said to him, uh, Jesus said to him, They will be totally destroyed. Not a single stone would be left standing. Uh, verse 3, as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when will these things happen, and what sign will show when all these things are about to be accomplished. And Jesus began speaking to them, watch out, don't let anyone fool you, many will come in my name, I am he, and they will fool many people. When you hear the noise of wars nearby and news of wars far off does this sound familiar this pa pastors around the world like to use these verses and say this is happening now it's about to happen well you know we're gonna get raptured Jesus is coming all oh, la 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 and they've been saying this over and over and over and now people today don't listen to them because we're you know we're we're now old you, know, you see this gray I've been hearing that stuff since I was a kid. Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. He's not coming yet. And and they use these scriptures to scare you, you know. Oh, he's coming, you better straighten up. Da, 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 da. You know, well, you need to stay straight throughout your whole life. But they use these scriptures to scare you and then they oh, I'm gonna make your money. Money, 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 money. Give me the money. Alright, that's that's what they do a lot. Um <clears throat> I don't know, bounce it between these three books, but you need to read them. And, see, and all this, um, all, all this destruction, horrible things that they relay to you was what was going to happen before 
Jerusalem, Jer <clears throat> Jerusalem was destroyed. Okay. A little dry there. Now, again, uh, let's jump to uh, Luke 21 20. <clears throat> However, when you see, he's talking about all that stuff and everyone betraying each other. And then he goes in verse 20. Luke 21. However, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you are to understand that she is about to be destroyed. Again, they use this scripture like it's uh, something's going to happen in the future. <clears throat> they tell you that in order for prophecy to take place, we got to build this temple. We got to build this temple. You know, Jerusalem, the Jews have to build this temple. Well, let me tell you something about the Jews in Jerusalem right now. Okay, they're not what you think, and they want a temple to begin sacrifices again because they do not believe that Jesus was the Messiah, and they will blaspheme God. They will blaspheme. They were they will spit in God's face and say, "We're doing sacrifices again. We're gonna we're gonna do sacrifice again because your blood, because your son's blood wasn't good enough." That's what caused the apostasy back in the day that the disciples in the New Testament talk about. It's not something that's upcoming. Okay, It was something so outrageous to God. That is why he allowed the destruction of Jerusalem. That is why he brought up that seventh king from Daniel, chapter 11. Allowed that seventh king, that Antichrist, to rise up. And it's in, it's in the New Covenant. It's in the New Testament where uh, one of the disciples says, I tell you the truth, the Antichrist is here already. This is back in their time, 2,000 years ago, before the destruction of Jerusalem, because he is the one who comes to destroy Jerusalem. Okay, There's no coming Antichrist. There's a coming false prophet uh, after the millennial, Christ's millennial reign releases Satan, and Satan picks a guy. Okay, you're my, you're my second in command. That's the false prophet you know, to deceive Whatever, whoever else he can before the final judgment but there's no coming antichrist we have satan here who cares about a coming antichrist when satan is behind everything today he was kicked out of heaven 2000 years ago about 2000 years ago after the destruction of jerusalem see when you study and you study these words you've got to put in and i've got them in my two free ebooks which uh on smashwords.com, S M A S H W O R D S.com. Uh, you can look at my books under author Robert B. Payton, P A T O N. But you can um, download those for free, and I've got some charts and everything in there that, that helps you out, and it's real simple. But when you put this all together, um, what you, we were taught was just not correct. Um, I just went off on a tangent, so let me get back. Let me just stop right there and get back. Oh, and if you're going to download this book, you should do it soon because the platform is falling apart and going down, so I'll have to repost my books somewhere else on some other platform. But uh, maybe Amazon or something. I don't know. Whoever survives the fall of our financial system here in America, which is coming. Um, anyway, Luke. 21 verse 20 however when you see jerusalem surrounded by armies this was 2000 years ago then you are to understand that she is about to be destroyed okay she was destroyed between 66 and 70 a.d three and a half years okay um uh, those in judea must escape to the hills and side of the city must get out um etc et well a terrible time before pregnant women some fall by the edge of the sword Others will be carried away as prisoners to all. Okay, here we go. Verse 24. Some will fall by the edge of the sword. Others will be carried into all the countries of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem will be trampled down by the Gentiles until the age of the Gentiles has run its course. Guess what age this is? This is the age that you and I are in right now. And it's 2,000 years. From the destruction of Jerusalem... To an event that's coming, the sixth seal of uh, that's the sixth seal. The information that was on the outside of the scroll, the sixth seal, from the destruction of Jerusalem, between the fifth and sixth seal, in chapter six of Revelation, which is the outside of the scroll, the information in there. There's two thousand years, 
And when that 2,000 years ha takes place, then a wonderful event's going to happen. Two, two events, but one's greater than the other. <clears throat> All right, let me let me let me go through. Let's do that in Matthew twenty-four. Uh, where is it at? Yeah, again, uh, for there will be uh, Matthew twenty-four twenty-one. For there will be trouble then worse than there have ever been from the beginning of the world until now, and there will be nothing like it again. This, this is in bold in this Bible, and it's in the Jewish real Jewish man, the real Jewish man that did this Bible, did this for a reason. Because, two reasons. For there will be trouble then when Jerusalem's being destroyed worse than there has ever been from the beginning of the world until now. What those people went through, no one and it says, and there will be nothing like it again. No one will go through. Hiroshima Nagasaki did not go through what Jerusalem went through back then. The amount of horror, satanic horror that those people went through, the slaughtering, the butchering, everything else. Okay, uh, the World War One, World War Two was nothing like anything that happened back then. You got, you got to understand that with the population control, war is a population control. But back then in Jerusalem, if you notice, the Middle East is like all desert; it's wiped out. Whatever beautiful country Jerusalem was, it got scraped clean. And it's nothing but, you know, it's, it was nothing but desert for so long until a certain group in, went in and made, created Israel again. Uh, <clears throat> uh, he, he warns them not to listen to people saying, hey, Jesus is here, there, etc. And he, and he says in verse 27, and this is, this is the answer to that other question, what will be the sign that you're coming back? Jesus says, for when the Son of Man does come, it will be like lightning that flashes out of the east and fills the sky to the western horizon. Wherever there's a dead body, that's where you find the vultures. But immediately following the trouble of those times, those times, What's following those times, that trouble, the destruction of Jerusalem, there's a, but immediately, immediately following the trouble of those times, the sun will go dark, the moon will stop shining, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Okay, uh, those times, time is a thousand years, time, plural is two, two thousand years. Okay, it is the same two thousand years that we just said in Luke, the age of the Gentiles. Alright, so we got destruction of Jerusalem, and then 2,000 years, and then the sun will go dark, and the moon will stop shining, and stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. This is an upcoming event, and let me do 13 real quick, and I'll tell you something about that 2,000 years. Uh, and Mark 13, again, uh, Mark 13, he goes through the same, Jesus, same stuff. And Mark writes it down. Uh, verse 23, Mark 13, 23. But you watch out, have told you everything in advance. In those days, a day to God is a thousand years to man. Remember that? Remember. Okay, so those days, plurals, 2,000 2, years. Okay. In those days, after that trouble, the sun will go dark and the moon will stop shining, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in heaven will be shaken. So there's a pattern here. Pop, 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 pop. Okay. And they're saying, Jesus is saying, after Jerusalem's destruction, after that worst time that's ever been in history, and never will be again, never will be again that bad. Just like the flood. The flood killed everything. God gave the rainbow and promised, never, never will I do this again. Now, he's reserved for fire. I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, he's talking about it's going to be burned by fire now. Read everything up on it. He is talking about the war of Babylon. He has reserved for fire in the last days. Okay? Which causes this, this fire, causes the sun to, to grow dark and the moon will stop shining. But it is nothing compared. What happens to the war of Babylon, which is if it, defined in the 
Old Testament, the Old Covenant, as a nation within Babylon. The whore is a nation within Babylon. Babylon all the time is the Middle East. So a nation within the Middle East, and that Middle East nation, unfortunately, is Saudi Arabia. But um, because of the evidence presented in, in that, and that's in my book, uh, People of Kasdim. So, but God's uh, destruction is not for his people. He takes all his people up. Okay. He doesn't allow his people to get destroyed. Uh, what's reserved for the whore of Babylon and the people who serve Satan is going to be that destruction. Well, I'm getting off on a sidetrack again. The outside of the scroll. Okay. Uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Destruction of Jerusalem, 2,000 years. And then the sun will grow dark and the moon will stop shining, etc. Uh, and between the fifth seal, that, the vision that was saw in the fifth seal and the vision that's seen in the sixth seal, the vision in the sixth seal is, this, and I'll do it in the next next video, is the same. The sun will grow dark and the moon turns to bliss. That dest destruction, that destruction is the whore of Babylon, not people in America. Now, America may get nuked. Who knows, what? who cares what's going to happen as long as you, you know, I died once, and I've seen heaven, and ugh, really, who cares about dying, you know? Someone has to, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, i still got stuff to do, but yeah. You know, it's it's uh, like, John, read John chapter 5. You, you die here as a Christian. Your next immediate thought, your next immediate step is you're instantly with God. You're up there. Okay, there's, there's a lot of other religions and quotes saying, oh, you die physically and your spirit, never, you sleep. No, not for, we don't sleep. Your spirit never sleeps. Um, that's another crazy teaching. So, uh, yeah, the outside of the scroll. Now, uh, the dates, everyone's like, well, it's 2,000 years, and, uh, you know, what you're saying is not true. All right. Um, it was like 780 BC, not BC, I'm sorry, 780 AD. And geologists and people who study ancient, you know, all these people, there they said there's a gap in time. There were nothing, nothing. They can't find no evidence of anything between about 780 AD and 1000 AD. And the reason for this is they finally found out that this Roman emperor. I can't remember his name. Uh, he wanted to be the millennial emperor, this Roman emperor. And so he declared that uh, they skipped 220 years. So in your calendar, it says, you know, 2024 right now will take off 220 years. And that's the actual date that we are in. Okay. And if you have any questions about that, if you look at the the, the, the the timeline in the Bible, there's 4,000 years in the Old Covenant, 2,000 years in the New Covenant, then the millennial reign of Christ. That's 7,000 years total. Look at the Jewish or the lunar calendar. It's like a 58, 80 or something. It's somewhere around there. 57, 70 or something. I haven't looked at it in a long time. Um, we're 5,700 something years or say 5,800 years coming up into the Bible. So that puts us before 6,000 year mark where these events, the, the this uh, sun growing dark and moon turns, we got another 200 years to go before this happens. And I tell you from my studies, that is the time, the, the, day, the day of the Lord is destruction of the whore of Babylon and the day he takes us up. It's the same day, and there's a verse in the New, Co New Testament to back that up. I'm not going to get into it right now. But um, you've got another 200 years, so don't, don't, don't feel bad about this, but uh, we have a long way to go before Christ returns. And, you know, but it, it won't stop. This won't stop with the pastors that just have... Uh, continue what they were taught and scare people to death to the point that nobody wants to go to church anymore. I don't even go to church anymore. I can't find a church. 
I mean, I, I can find one in Jacksonville. I know of one, uh, but I'm sure that pastor's passed away because that was one of the only. I mean, that was a man of God there. But um, uh, yeah, and it wasn't no big church. It was a tiny, tiny church. When you walk into a church and the pastor tells you stuff that's going on in your life, like right then, that's a man of God. Okay, uh, and he tells you what's going on. He tells you things to do. Uh, well, you know, and you're sitting in service, and then a kid. A kid walks in the back and he just stops and looks at him and says, You were out there selling dope just now. God's done with you. God's not going to protect you no more. The next time you do it, you're going to suffer. Yeah, he, 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 he's constantly listening to the word. The word. He's constantly listening to the word. We, we read the word. But God's people, um, I like him, prophet as we call him, you know, constantly can hear God. And listens to God and does, you know. I almost had that ability, but I screwed up. And when you screw up, uh, I don't know. So anyway, um, uh, so again, in the future, we got destruction of Jerusalem, and then uh, two thousand years, which is we got another two hundred something years to go before this happens, and then. The sun will grow dark and the moon turns to blood. And we're going to go through that in chapter 6. Um, but in Revelation chapter 5, Christ was the only one worthy to open that scroll. And all of heaven, well, you're going to find out all of heaven was just waiting. Everyone in heaven was waiting for that scroll to be opened because nobody knew what was going to happen in the future. But now, now, Everyone knows because Jesus, when he opened that scroll, the scroll of Revelation is the book of Revelation. Okay, that scroll, when he opened it, he reads, he, he read it, but then he gave John visions about what is to come. And this is the this is what you got to understand. Another thing you got to understand about the book of Revelation you don't read it from beginning to end and expect it to make sense. It's not, it's a script, and it's, it's a script. And uh, it's a take your favorite movie or book or whatever that's it's in order but in the book of revelation the way the book of revelation was it's vision showing parts of different parts and some of them overlap parts and you have to assemble it together when you assemble uh say like this is a this is the trumpets of chapter eight this is the bowls of chapter 16 and when you assemble them you find out you know just it's trumpet bowl trumpet bowl not seven trumpets then seven bowls you don't assemble it like that and try and expect it to make sense if you put it together using all the clues and hints and everything and doing your doing your homework then it will make perfect sense and it's easier to teach it's easy a lot easier to understand and because uh, Jesus believe it or not wants you to know Jesus already knows everyone in heaven already knows the day and the hour when Jesus told his disciples, uh, somewhere in Matthew 24, I think it is 25, he said, no one but the Father knows. He he didn't lie, because he didn't know either at that time. Okay, you gotta, you got to slow down and think a little bit. He Jesus didn't know the day and the hour. He was still, even, <clears throat> he had read the outside of the scroll, but didn't have the information. He had, probably could have a rough idea, but um, he didn't know the exact day and the hour. I mean, it's Jesus, he, he probably figured it out. I don't know beforehand, but maybe he didn't. <clears throat> Even though, I mean, he could have figured out the day. There's no way he could have figured out the hour, exact hour. Well, maybe. I don't know. But um, but it was after he, he made the sacrifice. After he won all power, all authority, all knowledge, is when he was able to open that scroll and read what was inside and he he does now know the day and the hour and that scroll is laying open somewhere and anybody can see it and they can read it and it's laying around in heaven somewhere i'm sure it's just like laying down people coming up reading it and uh, and it's in the it's it's it is the book of revelation but it's a vision you know we're, we're given visions because jesus quit talking in his ministry jesus quit talking uh and because it was too hard for people to understand they couldn't believe anything Jesus was saying when he talked plainly about heaven they're like you've got to be kidding me 
this guy's nuts, you know. Uh, so he had to quit speaking plain, straight up. He, no more straight up for the people on earth, okay? <laughs> you don't get it straight up no more. You have, you get the condensed baby formula, and it's in the form of a vision, and you have to suck that bottle down, <laughs> and it's in visions, and, and so you have to think, and you have to study, you have to research, you have to, you know, suck it in real slow, because we're just a bunch of knuckleheads. So, anyway, that about concludes, concludes, I guess, Revelation chapter 5. I'm sure there's something I'm going to miss and come back in the next video. And this was a long video, and it's still raining, but I love the rain. All right, y'all have, have a great day, and uh, hope everything goes well here for y'all in America. It's, uh, it's a good country. we just got to get rid of the satanic garbage that's in it and what they're doing to our children. And uh, I hope everything goes well for you and keep your children safe from these people and uh, have a great day and uh, we'll catch you next time on the next video have a great one